Well, hello, good people. Want to hear something crazy? This machine right here has the same specs as this guy. What? 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 I never thought I would say it, but this is the only pre-built system that I've actually liked and used for the past six months. And then Corsair's like, hey, uh, we want it back. So I'm really having a hard time dealing with that fact. I mean, this is a 12 liter enclosure and this guy is 66. What a size difference. Fred for scale. So this thing is a very good looking, extremely powerful, quiet and compact. Ah, there we go. Corsair one. Let's all appreciate what they've done with the system from the ground up and compared to my own build with the same specs. Hopefully my system is superior. I mean, how could it not? I have the best CPU cooler on the planet for its size, the best fans, the most airflow ready enclosure. The graphics cooler alone is like half the size of the Corsair one. So this should be fun. Want to step up your airflow game? Look no further than the Masterfan SF120M from Cooler Master. Featuring a damping frame designed to ensure stability, a connected fan blade designed for optimal cooling performance, and an anti-vibration motor that ensures better acoustics. It's very simple to install and it comes with three fan speed controls. Check it out down below. So I know it's not exactly fair to compare the Corsair 1 versus my full tower, but even next to other ITX options like the LDO3 by Silverstone, the Encase V4, even the massive H210 from my NZXT, this package looks impressive. So my exact model is the Corsair i165 with RTX 2080 Ti and 9900K, both liquid cooled, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, and a two terabyte hard drive. While my own system has a 2080 Ti, 9900K, 64 gigs of RAM, and my own set of SSDs. So let me show you exactly why I love this machine so much and why I don't want to return it. The first thing I need to impress you with is cooling. So my own system has six fans, unrestricted airflow from the front, but as you can see, lots of wasted space. While the one has a single 140 millimeter fan exhausting air from the top. That's it. You see these little stickers here? That will avoid your warranty, my friend. Don't care. Did it anyway. There's an extra fan for the GPU, but it's pretty insane given how well the system is cooled compared to my own creation. So both the CPU and the GPU have slim radiators and airflow is uh, passively intaked from each side and exhausted from the top. And I think all we can do is respect the results. After 30 minutes of stress testing, the CPU on the Corsair 1 is only three degrees hotter with a much cooler GPU, might I add, and that is awesome to see. I kept everything on auto clocks to see what frequencies we get, and they are pretty damn close with around 1900 megahertz on both machines for the GPU, and the 9900K auto boosted to 4.7 gigahertz on all cores while in game. And the fact that they're so close to performance while being the four times the size difference that's impressive. This means all my gaming and synthetic results are basically identical with slight variation here and there. And it's good to see there are no significant performance penalties with the Corsair 1. And so this is what custom compact engineering delivers versus a more standard PC configuration. There is no GPU throttling, which is great, and no loud behavior either. And while my CPU is three degrees cooler with the Noctua configuration, all the fans are running at 2000 RPM, which means my own system is so much louder. And I honestly was not expecting the Corsair 1 to perform this well in the acoustics department. Now, as for CPU performance, in game it's fine, reaching to 4.7 gigahertz, but in Blender, for example, we drop to 3.6 gigahertz, even though there's enough voltage. So by default, CPU performance outside of gaming is slower because my D machine clocks to 4.7 and beyond easy during those intense renders. And so it looks like the motherboard on the Corsair 1 isn't able to deliver enough power to the 9900K to stay above 4 gigahertz at full load, and overclocking is only partially available in the BIOS, so I increased the power limit and got to 3.9 gigahertz on all cores at full load, but unfortunately it's still locked to 95 watt power limit by the motherboard. Another aspect of my own system that is superior is the AO, just more USB ports from the motherboard, a type C at the front, while the one is adequate but also kind of disappointing, there's an HDMI port at the front instead of a type C because of the original VR focus of the one lineup. 
And so I started using the i165 after my water cooled system was finished because that was only used for video production and the tiny size of the one meant I could simply place it beside the monitor, plug it in and enjoy some games. So my work and play computer were separated. Plus, for some reason, the Red Dead Redemption 2 still does not launch on my threaded machine. I don't know why. Now I do want to address some of the long-term concerns I've had with the Corsair i165. First one being there are no dust filters on the side panels and that is for performance sake, otherwise it would block off whatever air is trying to enter through that top exhaust fan. But still the machine is looking very clean when I looked inside, no dust bunny is generated, but there's a tiny layer of dust like on the pump and like around the components. So you could potentially vacuum up anything from the sides and that would freshen up the system a little bit. The warranty for Corsair systems is two years so if you need to replace anything beyond that time, uh, the CPU, the RAM, the hard drive, the power supply are all accessible and replaceable. Of course, in doing so, by opening up the machine, you avoid the warranty. And it's really disappointing to me that overclocking is so limited because the motherboard locks the TDP of the chip to 95 watts and nothing beyond that, which kind of sucks because at $3,500 for my Corsair i165 machine exactly, I mean, you'd expect the same potential of performance as you would with a DIY system with the same components. Which brings me to my last point, and that is the lack of availability of this standalone enclosure. Corsair is doing this for multiple reasons. Most likely, they're not gonna be making a lot of money of it because the volumes are not going to be there. And it's actually quite difficult to build in, but I feel like that's where the ITX market is heading into anyway. So you expect a little bit of challenge when it comes to building something extremely compact and powerful, but I would love for Corsair to at least think about offering the Corsair 1 enclosure with the side radiators and maybe like a power supply in the bottom as a, as a package unit so you can populate your own GPU and your motherboard CPU, RAM, and storage. Because the components inside the machine are off the shelf anyway. But it's been a really good run with the Corsair 1, and it's got me thinking, I want to build something equivalent, specifically for gaming, that is also targeting like a very compact form factor, and I have the Dencase V4 in-house. Really excited to put a, my ITX motherboard in there, some beefy GPU, so this thing can live on my desk as well, and have my games so that I don't interfere with my production machine and have those two things separate. So stay tuned for that video. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content over here. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video. Whew. All right.